Ho, 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 and Merry Christmas. Christmas. Merry Chrysler. Merry Christmas. <laughs> what is up, my retro friends? You're here for another episode of Retro Therapy, episode number five. Going on with a reference to... Da, 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 da. We're going to be talking about Christmas memories today. So a big shout out to Asian Sleepy over here on YouTube. Um, he originally put out this thing wanting to hear about everybody's Christmas memories and stuff like that. You really only had to comment on this video, but we went ahead and we're going to do a whole podcast dedicated to you, my buddy. Uh, I will have a link to his channel in the description below here on YouTube. Otherwise, if you're listening on Spotify, make sure that you come on over to YouTube and check out the channel itself so you can see his amazing, his amazing channel. So if you're new to this podcast uh retro therapy here is talking about retro everything related to retro toys video games everything in this case today memories but we also like to dive more into some of the mental health stuff and really just talk about retro stuff in general so as i said we're going to be talking about christmas memories now this doesn't have to necessarily relate purely to just video games but as a lot of you guys know, video games is a big role in my life, whether it be retro games nowadays or just gaming in general. Uh, any free time I get, I'm usually playing PS5, I'm making videos, I'm talking retro games, I'm doing everything retro game related. I'm even sometimes forcing my young son to play the retro games with me, as some of you guys have seen on my live streams. But today we're going to talk about some of the Christmas memories in general. Now, I know everybody always has those... One's talking strictly, you know, like when I got my NES and when we got that. So, I want you're probably asking yourself, we're just gonna hear same old, same old stories like that. And for the most part, you're you're pretty correct. Um, my earliest Christmas memories would be staying. Uh, it'd be at my grandma's house here in Iowa, where we live by now, anyways. But I remember being very young and just being super excited for Santa to come. Uh, now, I, I think it was around, I would have been about four years old, four or five years old when I got my first NES. And I don't remember the exact details of it because I was still very young at the time. But I just remember being freaking so excited. And then not only did I get one for my house specifically, but my grandma also got one too for her house. So whenever we were over there, we could play it there. And of course, the earliest video game memories that I have playing in the NES is Super Mario Brothers 3. And to this day, I make sure about once a year to play it. And a lot of times I like to play it around Christmas time because it just feels so good. Like I, I like, you know, people don't understand I'm going to have some videos coming out about this in the future. How how really nostalgia is somewhat like a drug. And it's also like a time machine. You know how many times that I find a game out in the wild. Or I purchase a game digitally. Or I emulate it or whatever you want. If you're, if you're not in emulation or you think that's for the devil. Then it is what it is man. But I play games to play games nowadays. But I, whenever I play those old games. Super Mario Bros. 3. Super Mario World and you know just games like that i immediately get taken back to a simpler time in my childhood so i could go on a tangent about you know super mario world how every time i play it i just like i'm like you know nine ten years old again staying at my buddy's house we're staying up all night playing super mario world playing mortal kombat street fighter and Final Fantasy Mystic Quest and just instantly makes me feel for lack of better words warm inside I guess is what you would want to say um, but we're going to go from that we're going to talk more about the Christmas stuff so like I said some of my earliest Nintendo memories would be getting Super Mario Brothers 3 and I, I have the picture somewhere but I cannot for the life of me find it but it's a picture of me at my other grandma's house holding up the Super Mario Brothers 3 boxed and god oh man the memories so i know i i can think of one off the top of my head even though we were very young and you know later on when some of the newer consoles came out we still had the nes hooked up at my grandma's all the times even if it was like i said even when the newer consoles came out the nes was always still hooked up and i remember one christmas 
I don't think I brought my Nintendo 64 or anything over yet. I was just kind of visiting my cousins there quick. So we were downstairs playing the NES. And as a lot of you know, Super Mario Bros. 3 has this annoying feature uh, where if you play two players and one of the, the second player goes through a, a level that you beat, you can hit the button and activate battle mode. And in battle mode, if you happen to lose, you lose your turn and the other player gets to go on. Or you can actually steal the cards and stuff from the other players that you get when you completed the level. And I just remember always annoying my cousins and my sister with this because I was a lot better at the game than they were because I played it all the time. And I was a lot older than them. I was, I was actually out of, you know, the 20 to 30 cousins we had, I was the second oldest. So I was always playing the game. I was always older. So, you know, you know how it is with the siblings, cousins and stuff like that. You always got the one bully cousin. So I remember just annoying the hell out of the, all of them because they'd go... Oh, I beat the level, and then they'd try and sneak through, and I'd be, nope, and I'd hit the button, and then I'd try to take their items, and I'd just try to beat them, and then even at sometimes, too, it became more along the lines later on to just play for fun, that we'd play battle mode just to play the battle mode. We didn't even bother with the levels, we just played that. But now, that was kind of fun memories, thinking about that, too. Uh, I've relived some of those memories with my cousins over the years, occasionally talking about it here and there, and also the occasional just... Yeah, walk down memory lane. We don't really all play games at all anymore because we're all pretty well grown. But we do talk about that one time. Um, I remember once. Okay, so let's let's see if we can go to. I don't remember ever really bringing my Genesis and stuff up to my grandma's, but I do remember as a kid being super excited uh, around that time for Genesis games, and I'll. Uh, I think it was one Christmas around the time I had some surgery done on my mouth because I had uh, some issues with my teeth. And I remember getting Sonic Spinball and being so excited, but as a kid disappointed because Sonic Spinball, let's face it, a lot of kids don't like pinball games. They like the machines themselves, but a lot of, like, I, I'm not going to, I don't want to say this in normal kids as, to make anybody, because, you know, there is people out there that have always loved pinball games, even on consoles. But I remember getting it being so disappointed because I was like, yeah, it's Sonic, I, I fucking love Sonic, you know, I'm going to fucking play, you know, I love this, and I'm going to play the hell out of it. And uh, just being so disappointed in it. Uh, to this day, though, I occasionally pop it in because even though I was, you know, wasn't a huge fan of it, uh, but I had surgery done in my mouth, I couldn't play any other games. Or I, I didn't want to play any other games because I'd beaten all the games I had because we didn't have very many games growing up. So anytime I got a new game, I just played the crap out of it. And I just remember playing it so much. And oh, yeah, that, to this day, I still occasionally will dive into playing that game just because I think it's... It was one of the... So I don't have very many, many Sega Genesis games, but I do have that game. I think you can kind of see, see it down there right there by Shaq Fu, which is another game I hold on to for unknown reasons but moving on so one of the most core memories i would say for christmas presents especially around gaming uh would have to be it had to be when i got my playstation one so like i said growing up we didn't have much money so we would just so you know we had a lot of times you only got presents and stuff on your birthday well, obviously, a lot of people on their birthday or Christmas, but a lot of times I only, only got games was then. But I always remember that my parents tried to do me right, and at Christmas, we usually got pretty spoiled, which is something I kind of passed on, which I'm passing on now, because that's one big thing that my I like to do now is spoil my kids on Christmas, just get them, you know, get them a bunch of crap. But I remember getting that PlayStation 1, opening it up, and just, like, absolutely floored. And then not only that, I got Crash Bandicoot with it. And I just remember, this is this is the funny part about it. My first real memory of it wasn't really, in fact, playing it. I My first memory really of it is taking it over to one of my grandma's house and my dad trying to hook it up and just struggling. So a lot of you know we went from the RF adapters, which you can just coax cables into the back of the TV. So when you do that, it's just simple. Plug it in the system, screw it in the back of the TV, done. But 
when PlayStation came out, they had the RFAs. Is it RFAs or RCAs? I think it's RCAs. So you had, you know, the yellow, the yellow, the red, and the white cord. None of the TVs in the damn house had that. And let alone, well, mainly the ones were my where I played were in the dungeon. We called it the ba- it was, was the basement. It was just you know cold and wet down there. But that was a lot of times where we played video games, or up in the attic because they had another room up there where we had a TV hooked up. So I remember just driving my dad nuts. Dad, we gotta hook this up. Dad, I want to play the PlayStation. Dad, you know. And then finally, finally, we figured it out. And you had to hook the PlayStation up to the VC to a VCR. Then hook the VCR up to the TV, and you had to do it a certain way. Have it on a certain channel. You had to have the VCR on a certain channel. I just remember, like we spent a whole. It felt like a whole day trying to figure this out. And I remember when we finally did it, I was so excited because then I hit that button, I turned that PlayStation on, and it was just amazing, guys. I still to this day get chills whenever I hear that original PS1 startup screen. Man, just absolutely, it's just amazing. I, I, just thinking about it now, and I remember when we did that. So that was the one year my one cousins weren't there because they came every other every other Christmas. They would come down because they lived far away, and I just remember sitting there for hours playing Crash Bandicoot because I was and oh and the demo disc that came with it. So the demo disc back then was freaking amazing. So they, it wasn't your typical, you know, one level and done. You could you could play probably a demo on there for a good 60 minutes or so, depending on which one it was. But I remember that was my first experience with Armored Core. And it's still crazy to see that franchise tried to make, recently made us uh, a comeback. And I hear that the game is actually very good. I've thought about picking it up. But... I remember playing the demo disc and just being blown away. And then the fact when we could put CDs in it and listen to music too, it was just absolutely insane. And then skip ahead a year later. So as you just recalled, I said that my cousins only came every other year. So we went a whole year later. So then my, my, my one cousin Thomas, which was like my, my, my best, one of my best friend cousins, you know, growing up, we always did stuff together whenever he was around. Uh, we got a Nintendo 60. I got a Nintendo 64 a year later, so or maybe it'd been two years later. I don't know, but I think it was a year later because he came back. And I remember getting that Nintendo 64 and getting Super Smash Brothers. Oh my gosh, that was literally I think him, me, and a few of our other little cousins. That is all we did, and I'm I'm not lying. Like we got to the point where. That's all we did was play. We just played Smash Brothers, and we were doing like fun little stuff, like you know, you can only use items to win. You can only, you know, use melee attacks. You couldn't use your specials, and we were doing all this fun little stuff. And it was just like, it was really the highlight of that Christmas on both sides. Because you know, granted, I, I was get, I got a bunch of great gifts. I always did, like I said. But the systems is really what, but really holds in my mind is us sitting there, four controllers. The Nintendo 64 and just playing and just smashing it up, you know. I didn't really have much games for it. I think I had a WrestleMania, the WrestleMania 2000 game, but I didn't really have too many other games for my Nintendo 64 because I was so focused on the PS, the PlayStation One. I really just wanted the N64 for a few different games, and uh, I just remember that was one of them. Uh, Pokemon Stadium was another because at the time I was a huge Pokemon fan. We both were, and it was really just. Just sitting there, oh man! Like I, I, I could still like see us in my my grandparents' basement. You know, Christmas cookies laying everywhere, crumbs everywhere. You know, we're just sitting there chugging, you know, Coca Cola after pop after pop after pop, and it was usually Coke that my grandpa would have, and we we're just chugging them. We we're just you know playing so much Smash, and God forbid, you know, we would go outside, but we never would. You know, I don't know if a lot of you know this, but Iowa winters are pretty cold and uh, a lot of snow. So we didn't really do much outside. We just sat there and played video games. And I think growing up, he he liked Pikachu. 
that was one of his mains when we were playing together and I, I was a big fan of Link because I was a huge Zelda fan at the time um, I remember wanting or Ocarina of Time so bad for Christmas and I think it wasn't until a few years later that I finally got it and just thinking back on that uh, the whole <laughs> throwing away all that cardboard man I, I'm sorry that's just a random thought I'm kind of just going off in a little like tangent now and thinking in memories and stuff like that but it really was insane at the time move ahead a few more years transport yourself to the mind of the retro gamer dad uh now when the og xbox came out it was a uh, wow so i remember getting the og xbox going straight home after it because we, we had a late night Christmas Eve at one of my grandparents and I remember getting home hooking it up playing through the first mission of Halo and just being blown away and I actually have this right here from another reference that'll be coming up in a in a, another Christmas video with uh, Rad Bash Gaming so shout out to him as well um, and if, I think I referenced it in the beginning but you guys need to make sure you check out Asian sleepy or sleepy Asian <laughs> I guess either way uh, Asian sleepy yeah that's what I thought it was uh, but yeah we'll make sure you check both those channels out guys on YouTube but yeah like original Halo honestly some of the best memories I have uh, we just I remember doing the first mission that night and remembering I'm going home and I, I had to quit after the first mission because I don't think if I would if I wouldn't have quit then I would have stayed up all night and I had to get up early to go to my other grandma's the next morning for Christmas morning and I remember just like just blown away like the jump from PlayStation to Xbox to me was huge I'm not just saying Xbox in general but the graphic capabilities of Xbox to PS2 and or from PlayStation to PS2 to, to Xbox was insane and that Xbox controller just <sighs> like I never played the Dreamcast I didn't really play any of those other ones growing up so I never had dealt with a huge controller like that and the Duke I don't care if you don't like that controller that is still one of my favorite controllers to this day it's not very easy to hold in your hands I understand that and I honestly don't know if I even really like playing with it but just the way it looks and everything, it's just so like engraved in my memory. But I remember that next morning, put packing it up in my suitcase because I was going to go stay at my grandma's for a couple days, the other grandma's. And my cousin Thomas was there. And I remember rolling up, getting there, putting it downstairs in the bag, just left it down there. And I was talking to him for a few minutes, catching up. And he talked about something about, like, hey, you ever heard about Halo? It looks really cool. And I go, you got to see this shit. <laughs> like, I, I was like, you want to see something cool? And I opened up my bag, and there was my Xbox and, you know, Halo. And he's like, you know, we had, to, we had to go hook it up then. And for, like, the next three days, that's all we did was play Halo. I think, I think, God, I, I think we beat it that second day. We, we struggled with the library level for a while. Um, and we were, sw I had another game, I think NFL Fever, the very first one. So we were swapping back and forth between those two. But, yeah, I think we had that beat a day later, because we just sat there. We couldn't stop playing, and then we stayed up late at night playing it. And then we'd wake up early the next morning, start playing again, and I just remember it was absolutely insane. Uh, OG Xbox, I, I have so much good memories with, and rolling into Christmas that one morning with it and him, him just having to say, happen to say that and then me just being like ta-da I have one and when I remember when we were sitting down there with our other little cousins and we got to the part with the, the flood when you first get introduced to the flood and they start rolling into that room and you're just firing and firing the marines are screaming because they're getting taken out and we're just kids you know we're just like oh man you know this is crazy leading up to the final mission when you're on the pillar of autumn and you're just riding that warthog to safety and it's just like blew our minds at the time i remember not having uh, an extra controller so we all had to just take turns playing with me of course playing the most because it was mine but just absolutely insane um, 
I won't go on to much more memories after that because they really start becoming, uh, what do I want to say, less magical. Over the years, a lot of us started after that. Um, they started, we started getting kind of split up. Everybody kind of started their own families. Everybody branched off. Uh, I started becoming more, what do I want to say, not, I don't know. Just, I started grow, growing up. But Christmas still, like I said, I have so many great memories with it. And as a lot of kids tend to do. And my goal as a father nowadays too is to try and replicate all those great memories that I had for my kids. Um, like I said, I really like to spoil my kids around Christmas time. I think they deserve it. It's, it's, just, a, it's just something about it, man. I know a lot of people hate it. I shouldn't say a lot of people hate it, but I know some people got grudges against it. But, you know, in the fact, it sounds corny. It just seems like a lot of magical stuff happens around Christmas. It's great to be with your family, um, especially one that you're very close, your family that you're close to, especially the family you start. You know, I would, I love being with my boys. And it's, it sucks this year because I'll be working on Christmas Day, but we'll get to spend the time together the week before and also Christmas Eve together. So that's really all that matters. Um, but cl in closing, like it's, this podcast usually only runs 20 to 25 minutes long or so. In closing, I just want to thank you guys who made it this long in this podcast, this episode, for hanging out, listening to this 36-year-old recollect about his favorite times, favorite Christmas memories. And once again, a uh, big shout out to Rad Bash Gaming for having me in one of his episodes coming up for his Christmas special. And a big shout out to Asian Sleepy for issuing this uh, giveaway slash yeah video idea um i'm i'm i was super you know super excited to see it and i was more than happy to actually dedicate a whole podcast to it because it's it's a great subject so i will make sure that i have at least i'll, I'll try and have both guys linked in the description below here on youtube but once again if you guys are watching on spotify or listening on spotify make sure that you guys go on the youtube and check those guys out um with that being said guys I hope that you guys have a Merry Christmas. Um, 2023 was pretty crazy, uh, especially for this channel. And I'm actually doing a lot of things that I love now more than anything. Making content, playing video games, spending time with my family, building an amazing community here on YouTube that we can talk about anything we want. doesn't have to be retro game related. You guys got some... T you guys have issues with depression. You guys have issues with anxiety, hoarding, addiction, anything like that, guys. Feel free to bring it in here and talk. Um, if you guys don't feel like you can talk in the comments about something like this, make sure that you reach out to me on Instagram. And if you don't want advice, you don't want tips, you don't want none of that stuff, you just want somebody to listen to you, hit me up, guys. We're all here about improving the future. And I hope that this... Mic was not too loud. I just had it so close to my mouth. I'm so new to this, guys. But I just want to say Merry Christmas. Thank you guys so much for... Yeah. You guys, you guys are my Christmas present this year from YouTube. So thank you so much for that. Thank you for the people who listen on Spotify. And just thank you for everything, guys. You know what I'm going to end it with. As always, stay retro, my friends. And we will see you on the next episode or listen to you on the next episode of this podcast slash video cast. Merry Christmas, everybody. God bless.